And here we go with chapter 10. This is entitled by Ernst Gombrich in the story of art, The Church Triumphant. This is really the beginning of the Gothic era. What's happening here is the church is now the major commissioner of art, and one of the significant art forms having been developed in this era is stained glass windows. Once again, this artwork is being used to tell religious stories to people who probably can't read. But the church is being made into a very magnificent place, not fortress-like, but with the new architecture of flying buttresses and a better understanding of how to support a heavy roof with very narrow columns with a lot of space in between. A lot of wall space in cathedrals is being opened up so that stained glass windows can dominate. The way that this is being done is that external supports called flying buttresses are actually propping up the walls from the outside. So this chapter shows you several examples of Gothic cathedrals. The artwork being used to decorate these cathedrals on the outside consists of statuary, and a lot more style and individualized faces are creeping in. A lot of the kinds of elegant sculpture work that was evident in the late Greek world is being revived. So you see now statuary is much more than just stiff figures, but it's much more individualized and much more realistic. We also see that even though symmetry is still dominating a lot of the composition of the artwork, some types of style and grace are creeping in, curving forms surrounded by symmetrical arrangements of objects. And we start to see here also some artists either being forced or by their own nature diverging from the use of pattern books, standard ways to express things. One example in here is of uh, a drawing of an elephant, which had not been seen in England, and for which there were no standard arrangements of how to represent the thing. So the artist in this case had to use his eyes and depicted what he saw, which was distinctly different from the way artists were accustomed to working. We also see that a lot of times artwork in decoration was a crowded assemblage of things, almost like a collage. People of the times understood how to decipher the stories. To us, it may just look like a, a jumble of images grouped together. And finally, this chapter wraps up with Giotto de Bandone, the uh, pioneer who began to explore the use of light perspective, chiaroscuro, to depict images of statues in two dimensions that looked very realistic. This leads directly into the Renaissance. In fact, Giotto is often the artist used to introduce the Renaissance in many textbooks. Here, Gombrich does a little something by having the end of the chapter, closing up the Gothic era, talk about Giotto as an introduction to the next chapters which start to deal with the Renaissance.